I am so happy that we're getting PlayStation exclusive games on the PC now, and Returnal is coming up on February 15th. Now, this is a game that I've been really wanting to play, but I don't have a PS5, so I'm sure some of you guys are in the same boat. Seems like it's roguelike style, which I'm very interested in. I've actually been playing Hades recently. But with this announcement trailer, we can see that it should have ultra-wide support. I guess my fat head's in the way here. Ray-traced shadows as well as reflections. I don't believe the PS5 game had the reflections ray-traced, although I do think it had ray-traced shadows. And then if we hang on here, I think it gives us a little bit more. It does have Dolby Atmos support or other, uh, you know, 3D audio uh, could go on as long as you have headphones um, or compatible Dolby Atmos speakers. The DualSense controller features will be available on PC, um, although you need a wired connection to the PC using the controller, which is a little bit annoying. I wish they'd get that up and running wirelessly. Um, but overall, it's looking like it should be a pretty fully featured um, PC port, but what are the system requirements? Because, as we said, uh, this game was a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Well, we have the developer blog here from PlayStation with a whole bunch of information here. Um, they do also uh, mention that DLSS and FSR are supported, as well as NIS for hardware that doesn't support DLSS or FSR, which would imply that this is FSR 2, since um, the original FSR 1 was basically the same kind of idea as NIS and wouldn't require any particular hardware level, although FSR 2 is supported on, on GPUs going back quite a ways. Now, what are the requirements? And well, another thing I'm really liking here is that they're giving us a, a wide variety of performance targets. We've got 720p 60fps, 1080p 60, 1080p 60 at high settings instead of medium, 4K 60 at epic settings, and 4K 60 um, epic settings with ray tracing. So they are specifying the ray tracing separately. And guys, I've got to say, PlayStation ports to PC lately have been doing a better job of being PC, you know, games like with, with all of the support for a variety of features and um, good system requirements lists, all of that. We'll talk about this in a second because I was actually curious how demanding this would be because I was looking at the um, the PS5 game and I found the Eurogamer article about it to see how it actually ran on the PS5 because it sounds like it's actually a uh, a 1080p internal resolution that's upscaled to 1440p temporally and then checkerboarded to a 4K output, although it was targeting 60 frames per second. Um, but in other words, like this is not a game that's running, you know, native 4K on PS5 or anything like that. Um, so it is re rendering below 1440p natively on the PS5. So what sort of system requirements are we hitting here? Well, let's just jump right in. Um, First things first, uh, let's get the quick ones out of the way and then we'll get into the probably more important stuff. It looks like you need 60 gigabytes of space and they highly recommend an SSD, although for the minimum requirements, they do say you could get by on a hard disk drive. Remember that new consoles uh, do not have a hard drive. They have fast NVMe uh, storage and I really recommend if any of you are still storing games on your hard disk drive, you might want to look into getting SSDs for the games that are designed for SSDs as we get games that are no longer cross-compatible with previous generation consoles. I think that will be more important. Um, also, the RAM minimum is listed at 16 gigabytes, and it does jump up to 32 gigabytes when we get up to the 4K epic settings and ray tracing, um, although you can, it looks like you can get by with 16 gigabytes at, at reduced settings. Um, but And then um, now let's get into the most important part here, which are the GPUs. And for the most part, this seems to make sense and not be too bad of news. Um, now, I understand that this performance target here at the minimum is only 720p 60 frames per second. But the good news is that we've seen some games targeting 720p like 30 frames per second uh, as their minimums in some of my recent system requirements videos. So at least we're getting 720p at 60 frames per second with the low settings, and it's the GTX 1060 and the Radeon RX 580. Those are generally comparable. I'm hopping over to the uh, relative performance chart 
that tech power up. Uh, this is my recommended quick way of checking the relative performance between GPUs. Um, there's other sites that do a similar thing like user benchmarks, but those tend to be less accurate in my opinion. And this also just lists most of the GPUs. Like you can find the one on their system requirements list, click it and see how yours performs. That being said, this is not perfect. Different games and different game engines and graphics APIs will perform differently, um, plus or minus quite a bit from what you see here, but this is reasonable average performances to get a ballpark figure from. So the GTX 1060, do note that they are saying it is the, um, it is the six gigabyte version. There was a three gigabyte version and I think even a weird five gigabyte version. This is specifying the six gigabyte version and the RX 580 eight gigabyte version. I think there may have been a four gigabyte version of that card and those are generally pretty comparable. So that's your way in the door. But you know, this was is still a very popular GPU. A lot of people have it. Looks like you'll at least be able to play the game. Now do note that since this is targeting 60 FPS, if you were willing to play at 30 FPS, um, at 720p, I think you could, you know, while these are listed as minimum, I think you could have a weaker GPU. Um, although if you start running out of VRAM and such, that could cause more issues. So what GPUs would be similar performance to this minimum requirement? Uh, this is similar to an RX 480, a GTX 690, R9390X, 780 Ti, the GTX Titan, GTX 970 is a bit weaker than a 1060. It also only has four gigabytes of VRAM, so unclear whether that could be an issue. And you start kind of dropping from here. Popular GPUs like the GTX 1650 um, are significantly weaker than a GTX 1060. So this would probably be playing the game below 60 FPS, but probably in the range of playable still. RX 6400 and the Intel Arc A380 are recent but weak GPUs that are below the minimum requirements here. But again, close enough that you'd probably be able to at least play the game at a reduced frame rate. And again, you can pop in here and find your GPU. If you had a 1050 Ti, you're down at like 63% of the performance. Um, GTX 960 is down at like 58% of the performance. We're getting pretty weak here. 1050 is literally half the performance of a 1060. Um, so in other words, maybe you're down at like 30 frames per second with dips below that. And that's assuming the uh, VRAM isn't becoming an issue. So that's where we're at there. Now, if we st step up to 1080p 60 FPS at medium settings, I am very happy to see a GTX 1070 and an RX 5600 XT. I think this is very reasonable hardware. Although one thing I will mention is that the 1070 and the 5600 XT, I, I would usually think of the 5600 XT as usually performing better than a 1070. Although I believe this is an Unreal Engine 4 game and sometimes, um, Unreal Engine 4 games do end up favoring NVIDIA relatively to AMD compared to the typical overall average that you see if you uh, benchmark a wider set of games. Uh, the 1070, so if you're, if you're scrolling up here, we're now like, okay, I can probably increase the resolution or frame rate a little bit from that 720p 60, right? So we're getting cards like the, you know, 6500 XT, 5500 XT, those are all pretty, pretty comparable. The 1650 Super is pretty comparable. The GTX 1660 is a little bit better. The 90, 980 Ti is a little better, 1660 Super, that kind of thing. And also, if you're curious, the RTX 3050 is usually pretty comparable to the 1070, the 1660 Ti and 1660 Super are right here. So all of these GPUs, um, are right around that 1080p 60 FPS medium range. And then going up from there, we actually get up to the uh, 5600 XT, um, which is generally a bit more powerful than that 1070. So the 1070 is about 35% faster than that um, GTX 1060. If we set the 1070 as the baseline, this is what I was saying was a bit weird is the 5600 XT is usually a bit faster, although it's not a huge difference, like 15% uplift. And like I said, if the game engine doesn't like it, whatever. And also like, you know, what else would you have put here? It's, it's a, it's a close competitor, um, makes sense for them to use that. So I think this is good, good, reasonable ballpark to be in. And I think that's pretty acceptable for 1080p 60 FPS medium these days, especially on a PS5 exclusive. So this seems like, at least according to this chart, it'll be better optimized than some of the other uh, PS5 games we've been seeing recently. 
uh, at least according to system requirements list. Are you guys interested in me benchmarking this thing? If you want to go up to 1080p 60fps, but at the high settings, they're not getting us any 1440p numbers. That's the one place I would say that this list could be improved. They're saying jump up to an RTX 2070 Super or a Radeon RX 6700 XT. Now this is another one where I feel like the Nvidia GPU listed is a bit weaker than the AMD GPU being listed. And they're not saying ray tracing at this point, um, which you know could have explained the gap, but these aren't so far out of line since that is the 2070 Super uh, that it's absolutely crazy. But I will say, you know, going from a 1070 to a 2070 Super, just going from medium to high, tells me that the high settings are gonna be a lot more demanding. So the 1070 is a baseline. So now you're seeing GPUs that are a bit stronger here, right? You can either go to a higher frame rate, you know, GTX 10, 1070 Ti, 1080, 2060, RX 5700, RK 750, RX 6600, 2060 Super, 2070, 3060, A770, 5700 XT, where all these popular GPUs, here's the 2070 Super. It is 52% more powerful uh, than, the, um, than the 1070 baseline. So that's jumping from medium to high. Seems like it's gonna be a lot more demanding. Um, this is also pretty comparable to a 1080 Ti in a lot of games, uh, very comparable to a 6600 XT or 6650 XT from AMD, that kind of a thing. And that's where I'm saying if we set this as the baseline now, the RTX 2070 Super, um, they recommended alongside a 6700 XT, which again is like 18% faster. To me, it seems like it would have made more sense to recommend a 6600 XT or 6650 XT, unless either the developers maybe didn't have one in a test system to recommend, or this game does just, like I said, Unreal Engine 4. Maybe a 15% difference is not uh, you know out, out of line uh, to expect there. Um, cards like a 3060 Ti would be a bit better than this, that kind of a thing. Now, if we're gonna jump up to uh, the next thing, like I said, I wish they would have put some sort of a uh, 1440p result here, but for epic settings, so we're going up not just resolution, but also graphic settings, the epic settings. Now we're jumping to the 3080 uh, and, and the 6800 XT, which are very, very similar competitors. And how big of a jump is that? Well, from a 2070 Super, up to a 6800 XT is about a 71% jump. Um, uh, up to a 6800 XT, the uh, 3080 listed like a 76% jump. If we if we click on the 3080 as our baseline now, we can see the um, uh, the 6800 XT generally gets pretty close in 4K performance. Uh, depends on the game, that kind of thing. And again, so 1440p. I guess you'd want to be somewhere in between here, maybe at like a 3070 or a 6800 non-XT, that kind of a thing. But again, um, th they did a pretty good job of giving us a lot of results here. Now, if you want to kick on the ray tracing, they are suggesting you step it up even higher. Um, they're listing the 3080 Ti and the RX 6950 XT, but not only that, this is really important to notice. Um, did uh, I think they listed it on this one. They do say that use of performance enhancing upscaling like NVIDIA DLSS is recommended when using both ray traced reflections and ray traced shadows. So they're saying if you wanna turn on both types of ray tracing, you're probably gonna be needing DLSS. So while, I, while they are listing these for 4K Epic with ray tracing, I do not think they're suggesting that that's gonna be a native 4K 60 with, with ray tracing. I think they're suggesting it would be upscaled. Um, also, because going from a 3080 to a 3080 Ti, Ti is only like a 12% performance increase. And you know, the 6950 XT is right along there as well. Although usually with ray tracing enabled, it would be a bit weaker. Although um, ray tracing performance can be all over the place. Um, as I do in my in-depth comparisons, sometimes with just like ray trace shadows or really light implementation of ray trace reflections, sometimes the AMD GPUs are not that far behind their NVIDIA counterparts, but in really heavy ray tracing workloads, they fall much further behind. Um, so this could make sense, but anyway, it might also mean that they're uh, expecting you to use a more aggressive um, upscaling setting or something like that. Anyway, I don't think there's a lot to write home about about the CPUs. They're basically saying you can get through, uh, get, get by with a four core CPU from quite a while back with an i5-6400 or a Ryzen 5 1500X. Uh, um, although if you're going up to 1080p 60 now and going up to the medium settings, 
they are definitely recommending you go up to a six core uh, CPU from either Intel or AMD from a more recent generation with the i5-8400 or Ryzen 5 2600. And then um, for their uh, high settings at 1080p60, they're recommending the 8700 and the 2700X. Now, to be honest, a lot of times turning up graphic settings doesn't have a huge impact on CPU. So they could also just be saying like, you know, averaging 60 FPS and then actually staying above 60 FPS are two different things. So that might also be why they're kind of recommending these. It could also just be what's built into their test systems that they were using these GPUs on when they were confirming it worked at these settings reasonably well. Um, for the 4K settings, again, jumping up to 4K would not usually increase your CPU load. Some graphic settings do, and this is increasing uh, your graphic settings a little bit. Now they're going up to the uh, i7 9700K or Ryzen 7 3700X, but still these are not mind-blowingly powerful new CPUs or anything like that. And going with ray tracing, I actually do think it makes sense to jump up again. Usually the ray tracing workload does increase the CPU load as well as the GPU load. And we're seeing that go up to an 11900K, which is a fairly recent eight core CPU or the Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a fairly recent 12 core CPU uh, from AMD. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And again, jumping up to that 30, 32 gigabytes. Are you guys excited for this game? I definitely am. I'm interested in roguelikes um, and uh, you know, haven't been able to get into this one since I don't have the, the PS5. Also, I'm just very happy overall uh, to see that I think these system requirements, if this turns out to be true, are you interested in me benchmarking this thing? Um, I have a 1060. If this turns out to be true and actually playable at 60 FPS here, that's good compared to what we're seeing from games like Forspoken and things like that. So anyway, I hope all of you have an excellent day.